I probably played a little more when I was younger. Yeah, I'll bet. We all I did. I did some car racing. I did some drag racing. I did some snow skiing. and uh -huh. uh, But I always had a job. Yeah. But I was coming down in between some shady spots in, be in, in the breaks in the timber where they'd made the runs and I hit an ice patch that was frozen solid and my left ski just went, turned clear around. Oh. And I heard it snap and I went into a pile and when I got done rolling, my left ski was right on top of my right ski, only it was pointing backwards. <laughs> so where, where in your leg was it broke? Several places? Just right above my ankle. For about that far, there wasn't any bones more than an inch long. Oh my. It spiraled and just shattered. So how'd they get you off the mountain? Uh, the guy sent the ski patrol up there when I didn't come down after a while. Uh, uh. I, I, I forgot, that wasn't quite true. I, I made the first run, he got my money, and then I made the second run, and I broke my leg. Because if you hadn't paid, they wouldn't have come got you? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but no, that's not true either. Because he came over to me when I was laying on the stretcher and gave me my money back. <laughs> that's not bad. All right, so, so that was in the winter sometime. and you It were... was February. Okay. So what were you doing for a job then? Well, I'd been cutting timber. But that was a summertime deal and working on the ranch. And then I was working for Chester Loney. I quit, I quit the timber job and I worked for Chester the year before in the mountains. And I was getting $150 a month and they were supposed to be feeding me, but I ate deer meat all summer. so. They weren't spending too much on my groceries. And this was just this was just cowboy, and you showed up with your own horse and. and well, uh, I was riding several of Chester's horses. Okay. And I did have one of my own up there. Okay. Uh, you, when you're riding hard in that country, you need more than one horse. It's just too much for them to do. Yeah. Day after day after day. Uh. You'd wear out horseshoes. Uh, in like two or three weeks. Oh, really? It's just rock. Just grind them right off. Right, just granite boulders, just uh. rock, 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 you know. Uh. The only dirt that you ever come across was in the meadows. Huh. Uh, and, and there was some dirt on some of the side hills, but all the trails over the mountains and stuff were just broken. Just picking their way over rocks. Right, well, it's broken up. but. So, so now you're coming out of winter and you got a broken leg. Like, so how, how badly, so did they operate on you? What, how did that work? They put a pin through my heel and a pin through my knee and they stretched it out to where it was about the right length. It was an in traction cast. Ah. So they put traction on it, stretch it out, and then they put the cast on, but it was cleared up to my groin. Ah. And uh, I had a, rifle saddle scabbard that I carried my crutches in. Oh, so you just kept working for Chester? Well, we were branding calves and stuff all spring, and for one year I didn't have to do any groundwork. I just sat on my horse and roped calves. Okay. <laughs> Not so bad. Everything has its goods and ups and downs, you know. <laughs> so. So he was willing to accommodate that. He must have. He must have thought you were worth keeping around. Well, I I was getting my work done. Yeah. I put up all the drift fence in the mountains all by myself, and I'd build a a, a little thing that you could put a roll of bob wire in, and it had a, a loop on the front of it that I could put a rope in, and I could drag it on my saddle. Oh. And if it didn't foul up too bad, I could stretch new wire that way. Oh. So what did your doctor think about you working on it and putting your foot on the ground and stuff? They probably, uh, he didn't like that much. No. And a little bit later that year, I was baling hay, and I had my 
foot up on the fender of the tractor and I was using a pick handle for a clutch and I hit a bump and the, this was later, the toe of my boot, my calf dropped down and caught the lug on the tractor. Oh no, rolled and, it sideways. And slammed it into the side of the, the tractor and broke cast in four places. Oh my gosh. So I took it back up to the doctor. He was up in, in uh, hmm, Tucky. Uh -huh. I, took, I took the cast up there and carried it in. <laughs> Can I give my money back? <laughs> so he... Got a warranty on this thing? He uh, looked at me and he looked at the cast and he put me on the x-ray table and took some pictures of it and said, he said, well, if you'll promise not to put it down, for another four weeks, he says, I'm not going to put it back on. So that was great news. Sure. And the cabin that I was living in up in the mountains had a, a long table along one side. And after the four weeks was up, I could, I could put it down and walk by holding on to that table. Put a little weight on it. Yeah, and just because it's it's funny after you've tried for that long, it was almost six months to keep everything from bouncing and you don't want to put it down. Yeah. I mean, it, and it better hurt a little bit, Yeah. but uh, I got so I could put the weight back on it and pretty soon I was walking again. All right, so so tell us how that went with with the cast and your employer and working for them and they're accommodating that. And you told me once a story about a raise or something around that period of time. Well, I was, I quit a job, and this is stupid, but it was what I wanted to do. I was making 50 bucks a day cutting timber. Bushland. Yeah. And, uh, in fact, some days more. But uh, I averaged that in the summertime. And Chester was paying me a hundred and a half a month. Oh. So this was something I really wanted to do. Cowboy. Yeah. I'd been, <laughs> that's been my goal forever, was to cowboy and eventually run a ranch. So I'd worked for him the year before in the summertime, and, and uh, we got cows all branded and everything, and went up that year, and I got the fences all up, and, and got my work done, got the salt out and around, and I went to get my first month's pay, and Mrs. Loney wrote me out a check for $150, and I told her, well, Chester was going to give me a raise, and she looked me right in the eye and said, with that broken leg, you're just not worth it. <laughs> now. If I'd had an ounce of pride, I'd have quit. <laughs> but I wanted that job really, really bad. Wow. And so Catherine Loney, was that her name? Yep. She must have been a pretty tough rancher's wife. She was. She was a big old Texas lady that uh, was Lyndon Baines Johnson's first grade teacher. Huh. And he took her back to the inauguration. That was a high oh, point God. in her life. Oh, when he was elected, he brought her back? Brought her back to the inauguration. No kidding. Yeah. She made an impression on both you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's a tough old gal, you know. That, uh, and she, I, they had a pantry there at the ranch that was a room, and I'm running back in my memory here, probably 12 by 12, and it was out off the house, just enough to be off the house. But it was filled with shelves and stuff, and it was full of canned food. Mm. Meat, vegetables. That's a lot of quart jars. A lot of quart jars. And there was other stuff in it when I say filled. But she canned and canned and canned. And that's the first place I ever ate any canned venison. And you could take a, a jar, a quart jar of canned venison, and, well, you can eat it cold because it's good, you know, but dump it in a pan and, and fry up some potatoes and you got a meal in minutes. You know, it's, it's, it's really high-class food as far as I'm concerned. Delicious. And we canned some for my grandson down here this year. Oh, he yeah. Never, he didn't can, hadn't canned any meat, so. Has he had any yet? I think probably. I haven't talked to him since we did it, but 
Yeah, it's good. Maxine helped him can it, because we used to can it all the time. Yeah, part of the beauty of canned venison is it's so lean anyway, then you can it, and what fat's in there floats to the top, and you can cut that off, and man, it's just pure. You don't pure. want to cut it off. Well, I know, but if you were inclined, <laughs> it's just nothing but pure lean meat. Uh, lean meat's a little dry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you got to need a little grease there to help it go down, yeah, you know? That's true. That's true. Were these ranchers, the um, <clears throat> Chester's family, were they doing well? Or were yeah. they kind of like just they, they used done pretty to be well. in? They were probably like depression era mindset to some extent. Right, well, yeah, they what, were. What kind of people were they? They were. They were depression. Like my dad, Chester had a keg of bent nails. And if you didn't have anything else to do, my dad too, you straightened nails. Uh -huh. That was my first job at the anvil. Tink, 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 tink. I was probably five years old. Yeah. I think there's a generation of people who, who I think everybody in the country literally was doing that because Dennis, he talked, he, he, he just got rid of his bucket of nails from his dad like five years ago. Dennis is Nate's neighbor. Yeah, and his dad was same generation. Yeah, it, it was, everybody, everybody was just everybody like But he saved everything. I've thrown so much wood away on this deck project that my father's just spinning. <laughs> <laughs> but I did save some and I've the taken the nails tore out off, of it. You know. uh, but again, they didn't throw anything away. Huh. And that's, my father had so much junk stacked up everywhere that it was. What, did Chester have junk stacked up everywhere? No. No, interesting. He wasn't a junkie. He would sort out the high value stuff from the not yeah. so high value. They had, a, they had an equipment boneyard, but they were mostly old mowing machines and a couple old rakes and stuff that had long since left their usefulness yeah. but Chester was still putting up hay with a with a team when I first started working for him what year was that 50 I don't remember 56 maybe 55 56 really? still putting up hay with the team and it I took a Ford nine-end tractor over to mow, and his little mower was a five-foot mower, and I had a seven-foot mower on that nine-end, but I'd get stuck, and it just tickled him no end <laughs> to unhook, bring his team around, <laughs> and pull you out, and pull that tractor out. <laughs> it made his day every time it happened. <laughs> So what percentage of a nine end of a nine ends hay mowing capacity could a team of horses mow? Head to head competition. Fifty percent? If they were a good team and had a good gate, walking gate, and you had your mower tuned and the sickle sharp, because they'd sharpen them several times a day. It wasn't mm -hmm. you can you can get by with a tractor with a dull sickle. Right. But not with horses. Not with a horse. You've got to have it nice and sharp. And, and they'd sharpen them. They had a hand grinder that it set up, and, and it was a tapered wheel that would get both sides of the sickle bar uh -huh. one, one stroke. But they keep that nice and sharp. And uh, I'd say they, they could probably mow right at 70%. 70% of the that Ford. A, that a wow. tractor would And never out. be stuck. And never be stuck. <laughs> Did he act like skeptical about tractors? Like, ah, this is dumb, or was he kind of just doing it his way? Or what? Did he have he was doing it his way, it? Nate. He had a wagon, a flatbed wagon, and a week or so before it was time to hay, he'd drag that wagon over to the creek and park it in the water. Oh, soak up the wheels. Just get it heavier. No, soak up the wheels. And soak up the the wooden wheels. Swell up the, wood, the wooden parts in the Cause wheels. Because they dry out so bad, wow. and it's old. Yeah, just tighten it up. And then, and then at the barn, they had this, it, they'd unhook one horse and hook it to a Johnson fork. Mm -hmm. And it was a cable system that went up through the, the eaves of the barn. And you've seen those old barns with a big door and an overhang the sticking bonnet. out. The bonnet on the front of the barn. Yeah, and you'd stick that Johnson fork in part of the hay load on the wagon and then the horse would would start out and it would snap up and lock and it would lift that hay up and run it back into the barn 
and then you'd trip it. With a rope. And it would fall down, and then you'd scatter it around with the pitchforks in the barn. And you had to kind of build the stack so it didn't, didn't all slough off and it didn't get too high in the middle and all, uh -huh. but you had to take it to the edges. You, do it, you put it on the wagon the same way. You're pitching it on with a pitchfork, uh -huh. and you build the outside and let the center kind Stay of a little low. low so it would go to the middle rather than fall off the edges. So I, I've got a couple of those Johnson forks in the barn. We can get a shot of those. They're, uh, they're amazing. Yeah, because the horse would pull it up and then it would disconnect the catch so then it would run itself back into the barn. Well, yeah, there was a trolley up there and there's a knob on it and the knob would go up through this hole in the trolley and clink yeah. and lock and then you could pull it back. Now you're tied to the trolley so it right. would go back. And then it'd loosen the hay and drop off, and out you'd go, and back down you'd go. Uh -huh. And you could unhook the, unload the wagon in, oh, not very long. Yeah. That's amazing. I, I wish I could make fly in the wall, but when the early, early tractors, steam tractors were coming out, you, you got to just imagine these, like, I'll say debates, but they were probably so inefficient that they were probably not worth it compared to the team of horses. It was like, it was like before it's time. Nate, now, Nate, and of course, even then, people knew, like, yeah. this is the way to go. But there was clearly a time where people were just like, you guys are dumb. Yeah, yeah but Nate, those steam tractors were magnificent. They, they're just, they're a magnificent machine. Yes. It's, it's unbelievable. We're used to diesel motors running. Yes. You know? They go clickety 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 click. Yeah, like it's clickety, clickety, the whole clickety, noise. Clickety, yeah. Click, yeah. Psst, yeah. No, no noise. Yeah. Clickety 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 yeah. click click click. And the governor's going. And then they drive it over to the haystack and they hook up a belt to it and they run thrashing machine or they run a saw. Or choppers. Uh, or choppers, uh, corn silage and stuff. Clickety 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 yeah. click. But there's still, it's, the transition still had to be that the diehard saying, well, those will get stuck. Or, or and you do you can't think get everybody up. from minute one is like, this is the way to go, technology is king? No, you're right. No, they didn't, and they were diehards. But that steam power yeah. is so intensely strong. Yeah. Huh. It's, it's just so different than, Internal than combustion. diesel and gas. I can't visualize it or even like understand that, honestly. Because yeah, it's quiet and yeah. it's like... And it's Clean, there from and it's day. Like, it's there from day one when they put the power to yeah, it. Yeah, all it is is a Poof. fire. You have a Poof. fire burning. Poof. And and steam venting. Yeah. Clickety click. And then the noise of the mechanism. Yeah. And that's it. There's no explosion anywhere. And there's just some clutch somewhere that you tighten up when you're ready to go. That like, yeah, they have clutches. The power. They have clutches. They invented clutches. I guess it's not clean. It's a coal fire, right? Burning in those things. They they most of them use wood. Oh, they're wood. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. They got a little wood box up on the side, and the guy stuffs it in the. And that they're, they weren't as, probably nothing's as versatile as a horse. You know, like, obviously a team, but even just all around. But still, they were versatile, because I mean, they, they could hook up a belt to all sorts of right. different contraptions, right? And, but they were hard to go down the road in, because the roads were hard, and, yeah. and a lot of them had spikes. Huh. They had cleats on the, the tires. Traction like engines. Yeah. Because you had steam engines and traction engines. Stationary steam engines just for the t power. And then one to drag it like a generator. One to generator. And yeah, one like that. Yeah. But they, they also had a problem of turning over. Yeah. Oh, like the top, top heavy. Top heavy. Well, no. They they were so intensely strong, and some of the earlier gas oh, yeah. problems were this way too. That if you didn't, if you got a hold of something that wasn't going to move, the tractor rotates around the axle. Wow. Yeah, wow. It's killed Whoa. a lot of people. And then rupture the boiler, and the boiler blows up. And, well, and, and I don't know about that, but I know it, it would work on the early gas tractors, too, huh. because we had an old Fordson, and, and if you didn't get your foot on that clutch and, and kick it, well, it had a... One of them had a hand clutch. But if you didn't kick it out of gear, it would just climb right on over itself. And land on you. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Because it, it's it got the power to turn it over, and it just rotates. Yeah, then it, it depends where the pull was from. Mm -hmm. If if they, they got smart, and then they put the pull clear down underneath, so it was pulling clear from the front end under. 
holding it down. And it, it, it pulled the front end down. All right, tractors. Tell us about getting up on the side hill with your big tractor on the ground that was too steep and having Wait, it run. First, first of all, to button this up, is where, where does hit and miss fall in all this? Is that like the transition from steam to fuel? Or will you tie that in for me? The hit and miss was a, a, a system with a governor on it that shut the fuel off and the, mostly just the fuel, but sometimes the spark, when it was running over the governed speed. And it would go boom, 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 and, it, and the flywheels would get spinning. And then that would shut off the, the fuel and the ignition, and it would coast oh. until it come back down oh, okay. to the, to the, under the governed speed. It would let the momentum of the flywheel do the work until right. the speed went down. Okay. And then when it got right. down there, they go pop, 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 pop. Oh, and if, cool. you were, if you were pulling hard on it, you got a steady, steady ignition. It was hitting oh, all the time. I did not know that. The harder you pulled on it, oh. the, the harder it worked. And pop, 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 yeah, pop, pop. Yeah, it would just keep a steady, huh. steady so it was fire. just like a governor mechanism, basically, right. that just killed the motor until it was back under that under setting. that speed okay fascinating yeah. that's cool all right well, anyways what was your all right so you, so when, when you had the, the big ranch down here you said you were making hay on some marginal ground it was just a little too steep or something and the tractor you had i don't remember if that it, was in grass valley when i turned it over on myself or when you launched across the road it landed on its nose no that was dick springs that did that oh that dick springs did that yeah, right over here. Across. All right, so I'm, I'm, the, the grass valley, you turned the tractor over on yourself, bent the steering wheel with your chest. Tell me, th freshen that story up for me from the beginning. Well, a friend of mine got me 40 acres of hay for nothing. And I was young and hungry, and I had the equipment. So 40 acres was a gift. I went and looked at it. It was awful steep. It had been an old pear orchard. And there were terraces through it to where they'd driven around on those terraces to pick up the fruit and stuff. So of course, the trees were all gone, and it was a pretty nice pasture. So I had a little Model 40 John Deere that was a little bit light in front anyhow. And I'd got it cut, but it would tend to stand up on its hind feet much and like what we were just talking much about. Much like what we were talking about, because it was light in front, and this was pretty steep. Well, I had a, a semi-mounted side delivery rake, and I started raking that field, and about the second time I went up that hill, I thought, boy, I'm going to be lucky if this thing doesn't turn over. And the next time around, it reared up on one of those terraces and it came back down and I got to the second one and it just came right over on top of me mm -hmm. and the side delivery rake had two handles sticking out of it that you adjusted the the tilt of the rake with they went in poked me in the back and broke a couple ribs the steering wheel of the tractor hit me in the chest and it bent the steering wheel over mm -hmm. And I'm laying between the, the tractor and the rake, and the damn thing's still running. Mm -hmm. And the gas is running out of the fuel tank and onto, you. onto me. And I thought, I'm going to die right here. And there was no way I could get out. I couldn't even get my hand down to turn the damn switch off. And the hitch pin that hooked the two together broke. It just parted in the strain while everything's right. at rest. No, it wasn't resting. It was still straining. It oh, was still it was still doing. Not not the wheel. They were up. They were off the ground. Okay. But it sheared off to the side. I got off. I shut the switch off. I got about thirty feet down the hill, and I ran out of air. I mean, I just ran out of air. Yeah, blacked and, out. And I had to stay there till I got to where I was breathing again. It had pushed everything out of me, and 
There you were. So I went home and I got my little diesel tractor with the tracks on it and hooked up to the rake and finished raking. <laughs> Bailed the hay with the diesel crawler and you could kick one of those bales and it would roll <laughs> right down the hill. <coughs> Two wire bales? Yeah, yeah, wire bales. No kidding. Bailed them tight. Jimmy Phelan and I hauled the rest of that hay off that hill. He's dead now. He shot himself here a couple of years ago. Uh, how, much hay, how, how much hay do you think you got off the 40 acres? Probably 80, 80 tons or so. The, the gas tractor was dead, though. No. No? No. I had to pull the steering wheel back. I fixed it. It was fine. No kidding. Huh. Fixed everything. Huh. Why would someone give hay? Like, they just can't get to it. If you don't cut it, it kind of goes to waste? Or what's, like, the what happens there? Yeah, it's it it's better if you cut it. It keeps the field cleaner, and yeah. and it grows better the next time oh. out. It's If you keep mowing it, it keeps all the weeds out of it better, too. It's, huh. Well, that's pretty good. It's great, yeah. What time is it? Noon. It's noon. All I, right. I, I say we pack up. Yeah, let's pack up. Let's pack up. Sai's gonna go in and eat. We're gonna pack up and head down the road. I didn't get much done on that knife. That's all right. Told some good stories. Next time we do this, we'll demonstrate your press.